First Baptist, and good morning to our visiting friends. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. If we can just stand for a moment as we get ready, as we wait till our visitors come in, and, and we're going to quote the covenant together. Praise God. Let's get everybody situated first, and then we're going to quote the covenant together. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is our communion, communion portion of the service. And now, may we quote the covenant together that's listed or uh, printed on the screen. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God, to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to sustain from the sale and use of intoxicating drinks and beverage, efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior, to further engage to watch over one another with brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, and to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, 
mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will, as soon as possible, unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. You may take a seat. Praise be to his name. We do know that our Lord did something for each and every one of us that has impacted our lives today. The Bible tells us on that night that he had supper, what we commonly call as the Last Supper, with his disciples. He took some bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat, eat it. As often as you eat this bread, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. Likewise, after supper, he took a cup, a cup of wine. He said, take and drink all of it, for this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. As often as you drink of this, you show forth the Lord's death until he comes. As often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you show forth the Lord's death until I come again. This is Jesus' command to us, and we do this on the first Sunday of each month. Now, we want to bless these elements because we are partaking of the body and the blood of Christ. And we certainly want to be obedient to his word. Don't take it unworthily. If your heart is not right, then maybe you ought to wait. If you have unforgiveness in your heart toward a brother or sister, then maybe you ought to wait. Or talk to God right now and take it in faith, knowing that God will forgive them as well as yourself. Because all of us are saved by his grace for those of us that have repented of our sins. So let us bless these elements that represent the body and the blood of Christ. May we pray. Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful for this opportunity to come before your throne of grace, to partake of these elements that represent your broken body and the blood that you shed for our sins. We ask, Lord, that you would cleanse us, wash us as white as snow. We are miserable creatures, not deserving of your grace. But thankfully, Lord, you decided to go to the cross die on that fateful day and you rose again that we might have life and have it to the full and in obedience to your word Lord we're going to partake of these elements that remind us of what you did for us until you come again bless these elements to our bodies but bless us spiritually to understand all that you have done for us in Jesus' name we indeed do pray and let everyone say, Amen. Amen. The blood that Jesus shed for me. Sing this. Way back. Way, way back. On Calvary. Calvary, the blood, the blood that gives me strength, gives me strength. From, day from day to day, to day. it will never Today, 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 it will 
never. It will never lose its power. Oh, it reaches. It body of the Lord Jesus Christ that was broken for you and for me let us commune together the blood that ran down his face and his body for your sins and mine and the entire world May we drink together. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells us once they drank, they sang a hymn as they went out to the Mount of Olives. May we do likewise. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified me. Freed me forever. One day he's coming back. Glorious. Everybody say now.
said, I know it was the blood. Said, I know it was the blood. Save me. Yeah. One day when I was alone, Jesus died on the cross. Said, I know it was the blood. Save me. That I know it was the blood save me. Oh, one day when I was lost, one day when I was lost, one day when I, one day when I was lost, one day when I, one day when I. One day when I was lost in things One day when I, one day when I was lost Jesus said I know it was I know it was the blood Hallelujah Praise the Lord church Hallelujah. Amen Would you please stand We're going to have our scripture reading, which will be coming from uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 8 through 10. For those of you that would have your sword, we'll give you a couple of minutes to find it. Amen? Amen. Beginning with verse 8. The word says, love never fails, but where there are prophecy, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. Amen. When I was a child, Where? I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to read that verse. <laughs> I'm sorry. But God bless you. You know, sometimes we, we, we get carried away with the word of God. So, But we just thank God anyway for all of his wisdom and his knowledge. Let us go to God's throne room in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father God. Father God. In the sweet, sweet name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up this prayer that, Father, you would grant us the serenity to do those things that are righteous in thy sight. Help us, O oh Lord, to walk circumspectly to your word and do those things that are pleasing in thy sight. We know sometimes we slip and we commit errors. But Lord, we're so blessed to know that all we have to do is ask for forgiveness and you will grant it. Thank you, Jesus. Because when you hung on that old rugged, rugged tree with that blood dripping from thy forehead, pierced in your side, you hung there and you bled, suffering for the sins that we commit. Not of yourself, but of our sins that caused you to 
come down from heaven and to hang that on that old rugged tree and die that we might be freed from our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love and your courage that you dared not to give up that suffering that we might be free. I don't know about anyone else, Lord, but I know I say thank you for hanging on that old rugged tree for such a wretched sinner as myself. You the one that died that I might be set free. Nothing of myself. I wasn't able to pay that sin debt. I wasn't able to restore my soul from the sins that I committed. But you hung there, Jesus. You hung there and you died that I might have a right to the tree of life. Thank you. I don't know about anyone else, but I say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you cared so much that you hung there, you bled, and you died for such a wretched sinner as I. I want to say thank you, Lord. I appreciate every drop of blood. I appreciate every pain that you endure that I might have the opportunity to turn my life around and surrender my soul unto you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate everything that you did. As many of us here I know do the same. I just want to say just one more time. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for us. In the name of your Father, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless and keep you. You may be seated. Great 
hands with your hands lifted up with my hands lifted up with my mouth filled with praise and my mouth filled with that means you gotta tell God I love you I gotta tell God I thank you with with a grateful heart oh God oh I will bless thee now that's for those who didn't catch it now it's your turn with my hands my hands With my mouth, oh God, I'm so grateful for your presence. I thank you for life every day, God. Oh, I will bless thee. Oh, come on, one more time. With my hands lifted up, come on, I'm not gonna stop till you lift those hands and my mouth. Jesus, and a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, oh, oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, I will bless thee, oh. I'll give you all the honor and all the glory, Jesus, I will bless thee, oh, God, I'll continuously praise your holy name, I will. Oh, we can do better than that. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house. He's worthy to be praised. Ah, oh, yes, I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We're so excited to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. We want to thank God for each and every one of you. I want to take this moment to just give a, a few announcements, but also to recognize a couple of individuals that I see in the, a few people that I see in the audience. And uh, first of all, I want us to quote our theme, uh, if you will, pull the theme up on the screen. And this is our theme for this year, and it's called Each One, Reach One. And uh, can we say that together? Each one, reach one, coming out of Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. May we quote the scripture together. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is our theme. This is our challenge this year. How many people have you reached out uh, to help somebody along the way? How many have you invited to church? How many have you reached out to just lend a helping hand? Each one of us can reach someone else. And let's make sure we do that this year. Praise be to God. Again, I'd like to say good morning to you and our visiting friends here this day. I want to take a moment and to just recognize uh, some individuals that I know. And uh, first, and for, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, see that Dr. and Mrs. Wicker uh, is here today. Can they raise your hand so they can see you. Thank God for you. Yes, we're happy that you have stopped by here. I was very pleasantly surprised to see you walk in today. And we also have Ministers Melvin and Teresa Turner here today as well. Raise your hand. Praise God we have them. We're so happy to have you as well uh, visiting us on this Lord's Day. God bless you. God keep you. And if there are other visitors, raise your hand right where you are, and uh, we want to recognize you as well. If not, we think, okay, we have another visitor here. Let's thank God for her. So happy to have you. And if someone doesn't have a visitor's card, just kind of slip your hand up. I like to uh, make sure that I know who came when they came. Just slip your hand up and just pass them a visitor's card. The usher will pass you a visitor's card. We've got one over here as well, visitor's card. And uh, please fill it out in, in its entirety so that I can respond in the appropriate time. God, thank you. Thank you, and God bless you for coming our way. We're so happy to have you this Lord's Day. 
Also, in our announcements today, I want to recognize the fact that we are uh, entering into a new season here, um, and uh, voting is still going on. There is a runoff uh, for the Wake County Sheriff, for Wake County for Sheriff. Uh, there's going to be a second primary, if you will, on Tuesday, July the 26th, uh, simply because no one got over 50%. Or 50, if one had gotten 51%, it would have been over, but it's still in the running. So uh, there's going to be a runoff starting July the 7th through the 23rd. And uh, voting will take place on Tuesday, July the 26th. So please govern yourselves accordingly. This is the Democratic runoff. Uh, it's already been determined on the uh, Republican side. So we want you to govern yourselves accordingly for those of you that live in Wake County. And finally, uh, Women's Day is coming up on July the 17th. Uh, Women's Day choir rehearsals will be Wednesday, July the 13th, and Saturday, July the 16th. Uh, they are asking all women, all women of the church and surrounding community, you don't have to be a member of this church to sing that one time, but please, uh, if you are interested in singing with the Women's Day choir, uh, please join us, uh, join the women for this important um, thing. Again, that'll be rehearsals will take place on July 13th, Wednesday, and Saturday, July 16th for the uh, service on the 17th, uh, Women's Day service. Also, the Women's Fellowship is going to have a lunch, a, a brunch rather, a brunch, uh, which will take place Saturday, July the 30th at 10 a.m., uh, due to limited spacing, registration is required. And so register by uh, calling the church or register with a woman's fellowship member. And there are several of them in the life of the church. If you don't know who they are, just ask around and you can uh, get that information. Just ask one of the women. They should be able to help you. These are our announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly. And now we're going to ask this wonderful choir to come back and to give us a song, a hot song for the pastor to get up next to bring you the word of God. Amen? Amen. Pray for me. the Lord everybody praise the Lord everybody I mean no we serve a great God he's mighty he's awesome he's powerful and we're just gonna worship him a little bit today the splendor of the King clothes and majesty let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great! is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, sing how great, how great is our God. Lift your hands and help us say how great is our God. If you serve a mighty God, your hand, lift your hand and say with us. All will sing how great, how great. Yeah, yeah. Every 
Everybody help me think how great is our God. If you believe it, let me hear you say, yeah. How great. He's the mighty God. He's the King of kings. How great. How great. Oh, he's the name above all names. That he's worthy of all praise. And our heart will sing. How great is our God. Oh, yeah. He's the name above every name. That he's worthy. Repeat after me. That I lift my hand to give you glory. That I lift my voice to give you worship. I'll bless you, Lord. I'll bless you, Lord. Yes, I'm going to praise him. Yes, I'm going to praise him. I lift my hand. To give you glory. Come on, lift your hand. I lift my voice to give him worship. I'll bless you, Lord. I'll bless you, Lord. Yes, I'm going to praise him. Yes, I'm going to praise him. Look, all over the building. I lift my hand to give you glory. Anybody want to lift? To give you worship, then I'll bless you, Lord. I'll bless you, Lord. Yes, I'm gonna praise you. Everybody singing all over the building. How great is our God? Everybody sing it. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll sing how great, how great is our God. For he Oh, 
worship him. Come on, let's bless his name. Hallelujah. For he's worthy of all praise. That he's worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. God, yes, he is. He's an awesome God, yes, he is. Worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That he's worthy, yes, he is, yes, he is. Our God, our God. Yeah. Hallelujah. is worthy. What a mighty God we serve. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house? He is worthy. He's worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to praise his holy name. Hallelujah. It's good to see Ruth. It's good to see you this morning, Ruth. She's out of the hospital. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. I'd like to say good morning to you again, my brothers and sisters. I want to talk to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. One verse, one verse. Uh, verse 8. Verse 8. I'm reading from the NIV version of the Bible. It parallels, if you will, with the word uh, from the, uh, the King James Version, use the word charity. But um, we're going to read verse 8. And I'm just going to read the first portion of that, the A part of it. And it reads as follows. Love never fails. That's it. Love never fails. Let us take a moment as we go to the throne of grace, prepare our hearts for what the Lord has to say to us. Our Father in heaven, we are so thankful for this opportunity and the privilege of bringing a word. A word that you led me to, Lord, and just ask that you would speak. There may be someone, Lord, feeling that love has failed them, that you have failed them in loving them because of the circumstances that they find themselves. And perhaps they are feeling unloved by someone else. But Lord, after this sermon, we pray that their heart is encouraged to know that love never fails. We ask, Lord, that you would speak to a heart that might need to know Christ as Savior. And they would turn to him in faith and say, out of their spirit, must, what must I do to be saved? And I ask, Lord, that you would empty me of me and fill me with thee as I speak. For this is our prayer, and we ask it in the name of Christ our Lord. We indeed do pray. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen. Love never fails is the scripture, and the title today is Unfailing Love. Unfailing Love. This is sermon number 16, so I've been preaching this sermon, love, on love, for four months. Actually, it's over four months because I skipped a couple of weeks for Mother's Day and Father's Day. Outside of that, we've been talking about love. Love is a very important, so several weeks we've looked at the positive aspects of love. 
And it's going to culminate this week in talking about what love is in terms of uh, those circumstances sometimes that we have to face. We talked about last week, love never, never giving up. Talked about love loses faith. Love always hope, is hopeful and endures through uh, difficult circumstances. And that is often easier said than it is lived out in terms of love, loving in that way. We, it's hard to live those things out in our daily lives when things get tough. So today I want to talk to you about the attribute of love, talking about the permanence of love, the permanence of love. And we read in your hearing today out of Corinth. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about what was going on in Corinth. And we've said in weeks past how this church had a lot of gifts. People were expressing their spiritual gifts in such a profound way. But sometimes they got caught up in these spiritual gifts and they weren't expressing it in love. They were doing it sometimes possibly to be seen. Look how I can preach. I can play those drums. I know how to hit those cymbals to make people jump and shout. I know how to prophesy. I've got the gift of knowledge, and, and I've got all of these wonderful gifts. You remember the scripture we read today. It talked about the gift of knowledge, but all of these things one day are going to vanish. But the Bible tells us that love never ends. It never fails. See, Paul was letting them know that they had the wrong priorities, if you will, if they were doing things to be seen, if they were doing things just to be seen by the bishops, if you will, or the important people of the church, or just doing things out of a lack of love. But love covers over everything. You see, my brothers and sisters, that it, it, it was talking about something about tongues, if you will. Because people speaking, we heard a little bit just a minute ago. And folk were speaking in tongues, but some were lifted up in their pride. We don't do that today, do we? You know, folk are lifted up in their pride when it comes to tongues or, or prophesying or, or being able to holler. I can't holler like some of those people. Yeah! You know, I can't do all that. I, I, that's not my style. But the fact of the matter is, some people get stirred up in that kind of stuff. But Paul was trying to get them to understand that you did all of this without love. Paul tells him that even, uh, you see, even when this happened, and it's, it, 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 it doesn't do it, you don't do it in love, then it's for nothing. It's for nothing. My brothers and sisters, so when we get down to the verse 8, uh, we see that love never fails, which te technically means that love will last forever. You ever been in love <laughs> or thought that you were in love? You may have had puppy love or maybe you were in love for real. Uh, and, 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 but you were expecting the love to re be reciprocal, to come back to you. And when it doesn't come back to you in the same fashion that you give it out, uh, then you feel like love has failed. And you feel like nobody in the world cares about you. It's just that one person that told you, I'm not in love with you, or I'm not in love with you anymore. You see, that's when we may feel that love has failed. Uh, yes, in cases such as that. Feeling like we've been let down. Or feeling like our children aren't doing what they're supposed to do. We feel like love may have failed us. I remember uh, Reverend Florence, he uh, emphasized that love never failed a lot of weeks that we read that particular scripture. Love never fails. See, life in reality, sometimes love seems like it does fail. But let me remind you of one important thing. We have to, uh, the Apostle Paul described love in different facets of love in the scripture today. First of all, when, uh, the kind of love that we're talking about has a different type of, should have a different type of response or the way that we approach this love. But there were four different types of love that were expressed. We had that storge love, that storge love, that's the family love. That's like the love that you have for your mama, your daddy, and you, no families have for each other. That's one type of love. 
Uh, the second type of love is philia love. That's that brotherly love. That's the love you have for your BFF, right? That's the kind of love you have for your friends. Friend love, that brotherly kind of love. And then you have that erotic type of love. I, we talked about this in weeks past. You have that erotic love, and the erotic love is the kind of love that husbands and wives or, or partners have for one another. And these are the ty this is the type of thing that we, at, when we uh, have weddings, 1 Corinthians 13 is a very well-known passage to, uh, to talk about when it comes to erotic love. That's the, those are the feelings that you have for one another. But today we're not talking about uh, storge love. We're not talking about erotic love. We're not talking about philia love. We're talking about that agape love. And that agape love is a love that is when you make a choice to love somebody. It's the kind of love where, that, that you have when you may adopt a child. And when you adopt that child, you didn't have to adopt the child, but you chose to adopt that child. And even though and you bring this little stranger in your house, and you lay that little stranger there, and you love that child, you made a choice to bring them in your house and to love on them. It's the kind of love you have uh, when you have a wayward child, if you will. And they may do something, they may rebel against your values, rebel against everything that you talk about, but yet you choose to love them. You see, when they were young and cuddly in your hands, oh, your heart was just filled with love. But that was just the natural love of a parent, you holding that baby. And when they're small, they do whatever you tell them to do. Two, three years old, they may get a little hard-headed, two or three, but yet they don't rebel against your family. But when they become teenagers, they might challenge you and challenge your values. And then you choose, you don't have to, but you choose to love them in spite of. I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that goes across in a lot of situations. We have to choose to love. And in the church, we need to choose to love folk in spite of how they treat. They may scandalize you, but I love you nonetheless. I'm going to give you the unconditional love in spite of how you respond to me. It's not about respond. It's not about what the conditions are. It doesn't matter what the conditions are. It's unconditional love self-sacrificing love it's that kind of love that only God can give and I said God can give because in the, the, the best scripture that most of you probably know comes from John 3 16 that's the kind of love that Paul the Greek there the word love means that God so loved he so loved what? The world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the love that God, God loved us so much he didn't have to do it. But he chose to love us. He chose to redeem us. Jesus chose to go to the cross. Father, prepare me a body and I will go down to redeem humankind. I tell you, I'm so glad that he did it. Is there anybody here today that's glad that God saved you from your sins and it had nothing to do with that? It had all to do with the unfailing love of Almighty God. Oh, oh, I'm about to get excited. They already got me pumped up. And I want to, I, I tell you today, that unfailing love still spreads abroad. It spreads abroad. Now, do we have to receive that love? Absolutely not. You can say no to the love of God. Oh, yes, you can. But it kind of reminds me, when it rains, and if you don't want to get wet, uh, what do you do? You grab an umbrella, and you put the umbrella up. You may not be getting wet, but it's raining nonetheless. I want you to know God's love is still being poured abroad into the world and will you receive the love of God in your life so that you can be redeemed will you receive that kind of love that agape type of love oh praise be to God can I talk to you about what Jesus did when it comes to this love he had 12 disciples and I'm reminded of Peter Peter thought that he loved Jesus Jesus even asked him three times do you love me he said I love you Lord but when it came when push came to a shove oh yes uh, Jesus had to remind him Peter you may not love me as much as you think before the rooster crows you would have denied me three times and it was it came to pass my brothers and sisters but Jesus loved him anyway 
And when Jesus said, Father, forgive them, he asked God to forgive Peter. Come here, Judas. Judas was the one Jesus already knew. Even though he was one of the 12 disciples, he knew that Judas would be the one that betrayed him. But he loved him nonetheless. And Judas ultimately took his own life. Come here, all the 10 disciples. These other 10 disciples thought that they were walking right, living right, and doing right. Thought that they loved the Lord Jesus with everything in them. But when push came to shove and the soldiers came out of there, all of them dispersed and went their own way. I tell you today, that love, that unfailing love that God shows toward us should be manifested in each and every one of our lives. For those of us that name the name of Christ, we should love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our spirit. Love God with everything that's in you. Uh, it shouldn't be fake. It should be the real McCoy. Uh, because when God spreads that love to you, then it is your responsibility as Christians to spread it to somebody else. And I'm not talking about just anybody, but everybody. I'm talking about spread that love. Let that love just come out. Yeah, when people see you, they ought to say, there's love. Yes, sir. I, I experience, instead of saying, oh, Lord, have mercy, what a hypocrite they are. Uh, I told y'all a story not too long ago how a lady went in the store and fussed out the cashier and everything and then talked about how much she was a Christian. I stopped by here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, your testimony, your outward testimony, when you're out here in the world, people ought to see Christ in you. They ought to see love. The only Jesus that some people know is the Jesus that they see in you. And if they see you acting out and acting silly and not really uh, showing the love of Christ, then you ought to recognize the fact that you are having a bad testimony before people. Love never fails. It never fails. And I'm talking about in the worst of circumstances, you still love. The Bible teaches us in Romans 8, I'm reminded of the scripture that tells us, uh, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No, no. If you're going through some trials, that shouldn't separate you from God. Shall any of the things of this, shall angels or demons or any other creatures separate us from the love of Christ? The Bible said absolutely not. I tell you, God will not let you go and you ought to not let God go. You may have failed God time and time again, but he's still there waiting. Just like the prodigal son, he's waiting on you. Yes, sir, you may have gone out in the world and wallowed in the mud but he's waiting on you he'll hug you with the mud all over your body aren't you glad that we serve a God like that oh hallelujah love never fails and I'm so glad that love it keeps on keeping on it will not give up on you God will not give up on you and I'm so glad that he did not give up on me because I remember the day I was thinking the other day about my, my getting in a fight with a fella and I didn't know that he had a knife and he drew that knife out on me and it came toward my eye so close I would be a one eye Reginald today but thanks be to God the Lord didn't allow that knife it got within one inch it was a butcher knife about that long one inch of my eye but I'm so glad I remember somebody was shooting a gun and I was in the house I shouldn't have been in and I'm talking about a drink house praise God but somebody took a bullet and shot through the wall it could have been me but thanks be to God the love of God protected me I'm so glad that the Lord has kept his hands on me even when I was you see we were sinners but thanks be to God we're saved by his grace aren't you glad you're saved aren't you glad you've been delivered love lifted me when nothing else could help it was love love that lifted me oh oh yeah yeah i'm reminded of the song when i was sinking somebody reminded me of that song anymore deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within sinking to rise no more but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now safe am i it was love that lifted me love lifted me when nothing else can help love lifted me love that lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help it was love that lifted me hallelujah lord have mercy 
I worked a little hard yesterday, y'all. It seemed like I don't have much energy this morning. I got that. My uh, Lady Eva had me out there picking up rocks uh, uh, with a shovel. Bunch of little rocks. The yard looks good, but the pastor's worn out. But thanks be to God. It still, it was because of love. Lord, have mercy that I do what my wife asked me to do. But I'm still here this morning by the grace of Almighty God. And I love him. And I, I hope my love continues to, to spread abroad. And not only in the church, and, but in the world. And listen, you all. Let's understand that God's love is unfailing. And our love should be the same. Love the lost. Love those wayward children. Love those folk that just hating on you for no reason at all. Love them anyhow. And you don't know, God might use that unfailing love to reach a soul. Each one, reach one. God bless you. We open the door, if you will, stand in the presence of God and one another. We open the doors of the church. Perhaps there's someone here today that doesn't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Then we invite you to come to receive him as savior and Lord. He died for you. He loved you so much that he gave it all up so that he could save you from your sins. If that's you today, and then we invite you to come right now. Come, come while the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. Perhaps there's another who needs to be restored. You want to uh, join by restoration, then we invite you to come. Those of you that are listening online, you can call our phone number at 919-552-9150. You can talk to a deacon. They'll walk you through the plan of salvation. Or if you need prayer. Perhaps there's another who wants to join First Baptist Church. Then we invite you to come. This choir is going to sing a song to give you the opportunity to respond to this gospel call. Sing choir to the glory of God. Sing to the glory of Almighty God. Amen. Perhaps there's someone that desires prayer. We're not going to walk to the altar, but I just want you to slip your hands up right where you are. Slip your hand up. The Lord sees your hand. You can take your hand down now. He knows why you raised your hand, whether you're standing for someone else. Praise God. Deacon, we got somebody coming up while, while we're standing. Praise God. It's love that lifted us love that lifted us when nothing else could help love lifted lifted me but the Lord knows why you raised your hand he understands he sees and he knows if you're standing for someone else who's not here today he knows what your circumstances and situations are let us take a moment as we go to the throne of grace about those concerns in which you raised your hand our Father in heaven, we recognize you as the Lord of life, the Lord of all, the Lord of everything, the universe. 
you are our all and all. First of all, Lord, forgive us of our sins. Some of us have gotten in the habit of not asking that question or asking for forgiveness. And some of us perhaps need to forgive folk in our lives. And we have not sought that forgiveness. Pray, dear Lord, that you will forgive us for not asking and help us to get to the place where we will be obedient to your word. Forgive us, Lord, for all the sins and the iniquities and shortcomings in our lives and help us to be and to do what you would have us to do. Someone is standing and may have raised their hand because of the challenges that they are experiencing in their life. You know all about it. And we know that you can take it, fix it, do whatever you want to do with it. But if Lord, if you allow us to stay in that place, we know that you will give us the grace to go through it. Somebody's experiencing a physical challenge. An emotional challenge, a financial challenge, a spiritual challenge, Lord, some other challenge that they a psychological challenge, whatever it might be, a mental, mentally, they're just not together. But Lord, you are the great I am. We know that you are the lily of the valley. You are a healer, for by your stripes we are healed. We give you thanks now. For the blessings in advance of them coming for you said in your word that if we ask anything in your name you will grant it unto us but Lord we definitely want to walk in your will walk in your way we give you thanks Lord for this service today and thank you for knowing that your love is unfailing your love never ends from the beginning, even when we were conceived, you loved us. And you loved us even death and after death. Throughout eternity, love never fails. We give you thanks for this knowledge today. Now, Lord, be with each of us. We ask in the name of Christ. And for those loved ones who are lost, that don't know Christ as their Savior, Touch them in such a way that they will come to Christ and say yes to his will. This is our prayer. We ask it in the name of Jesus. We indeed do pray. And let everybody say amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God and in the presence of one another. Praise God. We are uh, waiting on those individuals to come out, but in the meantime, to not slow things down, what we'll do, we'll go ahead and take up our offering. We'll get back to this, uh, the individuals that uh, went in the back. So at this time, if you will, prepare your hearts to give as unto the Lord and uh, be as liberal as you possibly can. And those of you that are listening online, we ask that you uh, send your offering to First Baptist Fuquay, F-U-Q-U-A-Y, P.O. Box uh, 432, Fuquay, Verena, North Carolina, 27526. And if you desire, you can go to our website at First Baptist, uh, First Baptist Fuquay, Dot com and do it by way of PayPal. You can give that way as well. Now, at this time, we're going to ask the ushers to come forward while the choir ministers to us by way of song as we give. Again, give as unto the Lord today. God bless you.
for a portion to be given yeah. back to you. So we ask that you would bless this, this uh, collection that was taken up today. May it be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. Bless those that gave, bless those that had not the funds to give. This we ask and pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Pastor Lex, is that? Good morning, everybody. We have two wonderful young people who have uh, decided to join our ranks. <laughs> I have Demarcus Catheridge, Catheridge and uh, uh, Portia Catheridge and their son Preston Shields uh, to come um, to join the church. And um, first, I'm going to start with Demarcus. Demarcus, uh, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal savior? Yes, sir, I do. You know that he lives in your heart now? Yes, sir, I do. Is there anything else you'd like to say to the church? I would just like to say welcome and um, I'm glad to be here. Amen. Brother Deacon, what is your pleasure? Pastor, my pleasure would be that upon the completion of new members class at Brother Demarcus be offer the full-fledged membership of First Baptist Church. Amen. It has been properly moved and second that we accept DeMarcus as a candidate for membership of the church after the, uh, a new member's class. 
Uh, First Baptist, what is your plan? All those in favor, let it be known by aye. aye. Opposers, you have the same right. Let's thank God for democracy uh, and praise God. Okay, I, I probably should have started with the youngest one. They, they want their son to be a member too. So uh, at, at any rate, uh, uh, we got Preston. Preston, are you ready to, Preston, do you know Christ as your savior? Well, we're gonna talk to you about it, okay? <laughs> We'll, we'll talk about it in orientation. All right, we'll, we'll stop right there. We'll get back to him. All right, now we have Portia. Portia uh, 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 is also uh, coming on her Christian experience to join uh, First Baptist Church. Portia, do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ lives in your heart? Yes, sir. And that you are a Christian? Yes, sir. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, I thank you for working with me and my family. Uh, we've been coming for the past couple of Sundays, and my husband said that we're going to join the church today. He feels that God laid it on his heart. So we are here, and we hope you accept us. Brother, Brother Deacon, Portia is coming for her Christian experience. What is your pleasure? I pledge that upon completion of new members' class, that Sister Portia become a full fledged member of First Baptist Church. Amen. Has it been second? Okay, it's been properly moved in second. Church, uh, all those in favor, let it be known by all. Aye. aye. Opposers, you have the same right. The ayes have it. Let's thank God for Portia. Let's thank God for this entire family. Praise God. <laughs> God is doing a new thing. I don't know each one reached one. I don't know who reached them, but whoever did, I claim them if y'all don't want to. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. We all claim them. We thank God for, uh, for everything that took place. Just remember, God's in failing love. God will never give up on you. And if you're feeling that God is hating on you, that's a lie from the devil. Yes. Amen? Because he loves you with everything in him. That's why he sent Christ. We're ready to go home. Let us stand in the presence of God and one another as we prepare our hearts for going home. Let everybody sing. Now, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. God bless. Amen.